Hi, I'm Sam Schwerin, Pilatus PC-12 owner and pilot and Popa board member. We're here at Flight Safety International and we're here with Rod Kellogg, who is a pro pilot and a CFI for the PC-12 platform. We're here to talk about something that's really important and near and dear to my heart and to Popa as an organization, and that's training. How do we think about training as PC-12 pilots? Well, I think the biggest thing is engagement. Uh, you okay. know, as an organization, we need to have outreach within our community to get people seriously involved in training. Mm -hmm. The benefits are safety, insurability, and cost, right? Mm -hmm. We want to be the safest pilots we can be, obviously, sure. for ourselves, for our passengers, for the people below us on the ground. Yeah. We also want to inspire confidence in the underwriting community so yeah. that we can afford to fly the aircraft that we enjoy flying affordably and without two pilots, hopefully. That makes a lot of sense. Now at Popa, we stress training throughout the entire year. You see pilots who come in on an annual basis, for the most part, for recurrent training. What are the areas that we as PC-12 pilots should come to you with a little more proficiency? What are the areas we need to work on throughout the year? I think we're all competent in line flying. You know, our point A to point B flying, yeah. where we're looking at weather, looking at our destination, sometimes days in advance. Mm -hmm. For the entirety of the flight, we're briefing our expected approach, mm -hmm. right? So we're really dialed in and ahead of the game, right? It's a lot like hockey. You want to you wanna skate to where the puck's going to be, right? Sure. So that's how we're flying our airplanes. Mm -hmm. When we're getting ready for training events, we're not always ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. Let's go out to the sim and let's show our POPA members some of the areas they can work on throughout the entire year before they come to you. Absolutely. You know, we're going to focus on automation, flight director discipline, mm -hmm. we're procedural discipline. We're going to look at some unusuals, some abnormals. Sure. We're going to just really ramp up our game so that when we come to the sim, it's not a stressful event for us, it's a time to shine, but it's also a time to utilize the training environment to maximize the impact that it makes in our flying lives. That's great. Let's go fly. Let's go. Okay, so, so yep, so right at 150, 6,500. Let me know when you're ready and we'll start the maneuver. Okay, 150, 6,500, 15, and heading east. All right. Here we okay, go. we're going to go please. left turn. We're going to go power to 20. We're going to roll in. Excellent. Oh, geez, too much power. We're going to keep it right on there. We need 30, 45, and we got to right come there. down just a little bit. A little more bank. There you go. All right, checking that altitude just a little bit. Power's high. Yep. Airspeed's looking good. A little more bank. There you go. Nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. All right. Air, our altitude is slowly yep. coming down. Yeah, we're going to bring it down. Yep. Make sure we trim. Airspeed's nice and stable. Bank's hanging in there. Still working that uh, 50 foot there. Let's try yep. to work that out. 180 out. <clears throat> there you go. Coming down on your altitude, looking nice. Airspeed's holding together good. Bank. 10. Okay. Don't let it balloon. Yep. And clear. Coming around. Coming back to the right. Correcting my altitude. There you go. 45. Very good. Altitude's looking great. 150 Air knots. Airspeed's bleeding just a tad. Bank is looking good right there. Altitude's looking good. Okay, if I bring it down 20 feet, I'll get to 150. Hundred and eighty to go. Keeping that bank in there. Speed's looking good. Altitude's looking great. Speed slowly tapering. Yeah. Bank's so looking good. Power. Keeping it right on that level line. 90 to go. Don't roll out too early. Yep. There we go. Altitude's great. 30 to go. 20, 10. Don't let it balloon. Rolling out. Beautifully executed. And yeah. power back to 50. There you go. 
All right. So here we are, we're at 6,500, we're about 150 uh, heading of east. So we're gonna power all the way back. Roger. We're gonna hold it on the horizon line and maintain our heading. Trim up a little bit as we slow. Gear, 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 gear. Gear, 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 gear. Okay, stall, 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 stall. Power full. Pitching down, right rudder. Speed's coming up. We have a positive rate. We're going to recover our altitude. 6,500, and we're going to bring power back. Very good. Okay, there's 6,500. And too much power off. Try to remember, go to your presets is fine to stabilize. Yeah. So call it stable. If I go to 15, and then we'll stabilize. Oh. And my altitude is off. The only note I would give yeah. on that is, I, I do advise everybody pay special attention to your dynamic speed bug here. Oh, okay, good idea. And, and so, when it's up <laughs> here above our indicated speed, yes. if our dynamic speed bug's up here, above us, I tell everybody to resist the pull, right? Okay. Wait until it drops below, because that's a better energy state. Once we're below it, we're at least 1.3 above VSO, right? Okay. So that's, that's my watch item because the issue there is if it's up here and you're recovering yeah you may get that secondary bump. okay I understand. yeah, yeah. so uh, but you did great I mean we had very minimal altitude loss but that's the only thing we were just sort of on that fine line but yeah otherwise great okay okay so 65 so we're gonna <coughs> initiate our turn the powers back time That back pressure will have to stay in there. Yep, there you go. You're bringing the stall to you. Yeah. Okay. Stall, 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 stall. Okay, level. Gear to third. Uh, gear to f flaps to fifteen. There you go. We're full power. All right. <clears throat> We've got speed coming. Yep. We've got positive, almost a positive rate here. Yep. There's positive rate. Gears up. And we're above a hundred. So we'll go flaps to zero. And recover at 6,500, back to 15 PSI. Stabilized. And there we're stabilized. All right, outstanding. All right, so again, we're talking about the dynamic speed bug here, and we're talking about recoveries. Getting all the pedals there. <laughs> all right. So, if we get to an energy state where our dynamic speed bug is above our indicated airspeed, we are very close to a stall situation. High angle of attack, we're going to be getting stalled. Now look, without adding any power, we can drop the nose, gain energy, and start the recovery. But as recovery starts to proceed, we're going to be putting ourselves back in the stall zone. And as we get above here, even without a power increase, stall. we're going to go back into the stall. Now, with the power full, until we let that dynamic speed bug get below us, we don't need to try that recovery pull because we will inadvertently pull ourselves into a stall. Alrighty, if you can, uh, close your eyes, okay. put you on your chest, and put it in a left turn. Left turn. You can continue that left turn. Stop turn, and 
Bank angle. All right, recovery. Bank angle. Okay, I see we're down. Bank we're angle. Power back. We're Bank gonna angle. Roll it. We're gonna bring the. We're gonna pull to the horizon. Now we're gonna add power. There you go. And now we're stable. All right, stabilize and reset your power. There you go. To 15. And we'll retrim right there. All right. Clean that out. Oh, thanks. Sir. All right. All right, and close your eyes. Okay. Here we go. All right, your aircraft. My aircraft, okay, we are gonna go, we're nose high. We're gonna push down first. Gear. And we're gonna put our power out, a power to full. Okay. We're climbing back to 6,500 and we're pulling power back to 15 PSI. And we're stable. All right, very good, very good. Boy, it took a minute to figure out where the heck the ground was. Yeah. It was only right here. Yeah. Yeah. But IMC, then I saw the uh, airspeed. IMC, uh, IMC recoveries are tough yeah. when you're totally focused. For on sure, it. yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're uh, on the VOR runway 14. We're going to circle land runway 1 right at Wichita. So we are joining right here, uh, just inside the final approach fix. We're on speed, fully configured, and descending down to our first descent point, Jugov. Half mile of Jugov. Vertical speed down to 700. And power it back to 12. Okay, descending. Looking for the airport. <clears throat> Min's 1,800. We've got gear down, 15 flaps. We're fully configured. Okay, ground contact. Alright, that's where you start working, Sam. Looking for the airport. Zooming in. Very good. Minimum. You know I'm going to take a right turn. We're at minimums, keeping our speed up to 120. Into this far runway here. Speed is okay. A little more power. Two miles. Okay, we're within minimums. Let me know when you have the runway in sight. Okay, I've got the airport environment. All right, runway in sight. All right, making a right turn. And we are. So this will be our landing runway. Check our spacing. Okay. We're in tight, so I'm a little concerned. All right. Okay, there's my runway. Keeping it in sight. You can roll a little more into the downwind if you need. Okay. We're gonna take off autopilot at this point. And now I'm losing sight of, and we can come down. Losing sight of my runway, I want to be careful of. There's my runway. Okay, I've got to come around. A little more power. Coming around, and I should see the runway soon here. There it is. 
and I'm All right, past here's the it. painful decision right here, right? What do we do? Okay, we're gonna go mist, which means we've got to turn all the way around and go mist. So what do we do? There you go. So to go around, power's coming up. Check the scoreboard right now because you've hit yep. togas. So we're gonna hit nav. Very good. Coming around, we're into the clouds. <laughs> autopilot at this point. And we've got a positive rate, gears coming up. Separator stays open. We're above 100, we're gonna bring flaps up. We're on the mist. Let's just reconfirm we are where we think we are. We are, good. Right. And we can see ourselves right here. We're gonna come out here, we're gonna take a left, a right turn back around, is what I expect. And we need to go to 3,000. In the control environment, you'd be talking to the tower right now. He'd most likely give you a heading. So we'll give you a heading right now. Climb to 3,000 okay. and turn uh, left to a heading of 360. Left 360. Let me know when you're stabilized and configured. Okay, okay we're 3,000, we're turning, we've got power back. We're going to slow things down and come down to a power setting of 15 PSI. All right. And we're heading 360, 3000 on the altitude. So let's pause the sim for just a second. Let's talk about what happened on that approach. It was a lot more challenging to see the runway than we anticipated, even than I anticipated. It sure was. As soon as we kicked the autopilot off, I think we started seeing all the hazards that we're exposed to during one of these circling approaches. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw, our energy state got alarmingly low a couple of times. Mm. Our bank angles got really high. Mm -hmm. This is a great example of why we don't want to shoot the single pilot at night in the weather. Uh, we really want to use these training scenarios to get a good understanding for why we're going to refuse this style of approach. Yeah, absolutely. At 467 feet off the ground, we got a little below minimums as soon as we kicked the autopilot off, perfectly normal. We started getting excessive bank. We started losing our positive energy state control, right? We finally found ourselves at the impact point for one of these approaches, which is we're, we're overshooting, we're very low level, we're low energy state, we've got to make that decision. We're looking at it, it's hard not to try to suck it in, right? Yeah, absolutely. But, but what's the right thing to do? Yeah, go around. Go around. You do exactly what you did, Sam. So that's the right thing to do. I think we'll be able to review that video and see a lot of the dangers that, that we don't even have to worry about replicating because they naturally unfold for everybody that's in this scenario. Boy, we were so close to the runway. The only way to get there was to kick off the autopilot. Yeah, and that's the part you got to fight. It's, it's uh, doing the right thing when it's right there in your grasp. Yeah, I All get right? it for sure. All right, Sam, so we just did the maneuvers, the steep turns. We did the stalls and the unusual attitude recoveries. What are some of your takeaways from those and, and how do you think we're gonna apply what we just used as a air work maneuver into a real world scenario on an approach? Boy, uh, first thing is uh, I get rusty not doing these procedures sure. that often. Uh, and so I think it's really critical whether it's uh, an annual uh, recurrency or it's uh, periodic with, uh, with others to continue to go out there and do air work. Uh, on the steep turns, really keeping that scan going and understanding my energy state relative to uh, the other things I was focused on. I found myself uh, fixating on angle of bank or on speed or on altitude, whereas I've got to really keep that scan going. Uh, on, uh, on the stalls, really uh, carefully considering that energy vector and ensuring myself that I'm not going to enter uh, especially given the urgency that's perceived in a, in a stall situation, really slowing down and understanding what my energy level is and not letting myself re-enter into a secondary stall, uh, which it seems really easy to happen, easier than I thought, to be honest. Right. Uh, so I'm glad we practiced here in the sim. And on the loss of control, it, really the same thing, not, uh, not rushing that recovery, understanding, is it nose high, is it nose low, what is my bank? Can I pull or can I not pull? Right. Uh, when we're descending and picking up speed and we're at an angle, I can't pull. 
You've yeah. really got to level those wings first. Uh, so, so really great. And I think I'll, you know, I think I'll go out and I'll keep doing them at least once a quarter. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, if we're just coming through the sim or, or doing annual training in the aircraft, you know, we go 12 months of relatively benign flying. Right. Yeah. We're not, we're not on the edges of the envelope. So that's that's a great opportunity for us in the training environment to to sort of reacquaint ourselves with those edges, right? Places where we don't play often. So the energy state is super critical as we're uh, shooting approaches. As you'll see later, as we're doing some circling approaches, we'll be in very compressed airspace and having to monitor our energy state. Also having to monitor our bank angles, right? Uh, we're going to address those issues constantly on these very tight approaches that we might not shoot real world. Maybe we'll have the discipline to pump the brakes and say, yeah, we're not going to put ourselves in that position, but we will take advantage of these training opportunities to do that. So uh, again, a, a great reminder is why is it that we're doing these maneuvers? We're getting up there to practice the skills that we're going to have to apply in a very, very high stressful environment at the bottom.